Okay. Hey guys, so this is the first time that we've done this. So I thought I would come in and give a little bit of a heads up to everybody who isn't following my Facebook um, page, um, Dirt Patch Heaven. And the reason we're trying this is that for those of you who don't really care about wool or uh, just prefer the YouTube platform, we're trying to do the fun how to type videos over on Facebook Live. It's a little bit easier to set it up. But today at 11 o'clock Central AM, Catherine, she is helping me with my Facebook page and she's brilliant. So I can't wait for you guys to meet her. We are going to be talking about wool and how to process your wool inexpensively. Um, this is one of the things that I have made, one of the hats. And I used to make a significant, if not the majority of my income from Etsy. And so for those of you who are curious about how to make crafts into your livelihood, particularly wool crafts, um, that is going to be what we will be teaching. We will be starting with processing your wool and how to do it inexpensively. So these are dog brushes. Let's see if I can find my other one. These are just dog brushes and they're not even the expensive dog brushes from the pet store. These are dog brushes from Amazon. I think they cost a dollar a piece and you can brush wool out with these. They actually work pretty good. I have a significant bag of fiber that I processed with those brushes and this was raw fleece and um, I bought the, or no, she sent it to me. If you guys haven't seen Natalie from Namaste Farms, she is amazing and I am in love with her fiber and I asked her if I sh could showcase some of her fleece and she sent me this huge box of fleece. In the past, I've always bought it and it has been a joy to spend with. Anyway, it's something I can't stop putting my fingers into. This is Merino, which you have to be really careful when you process Merino because it wants to, it wants to ball up. It's so buttery and so soft and so fine that what it really wants to do is ball up on you. So this is what I processed. All of this I processed with dog cones. And then if we go up a notch, sorry for the noise, especially for those of you who are listening really early in the morning, sorry for the noise. These are what most people think of when they think of processing wool. And I need to go through and pick out, that's dark fiber that I need to go pick out because it, 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 will, it will mess up white fiber and it'll leave little balls. These are not my favorite tool. They create wool and yarn, uh, wool and fiber, fiber that creates wool and yarn, which is puffy and open and bouncy. And it's actually a little tricky to make really good roving with these, roving that isn't gonna have little balls in it that isn't going to bend back on itself and create some slubbing. Um, I, these are not my favorite, but I'm going to show you how to use them because this is how you create regular um, Rolags, similar to roving. And so there's two of them. And I'll see if I can find the fiber that I actually processed. I like to keep them covered in something. so They're not damaging each other. So these, let's see if I can get that off. These are the Rolags that I created using those. Those are roll eggs. So that's what you do with those particular brushes. Let's see if I can get it put up or maybe I should just move on. I'll just move on. Okay. And then the last one, these are combs. And they're quite deadly. They're very dangerous. Don't use them around small children, please. These are combs. And what they do is they actually clean the fiber. They take out the debris. They take out the hair. They take out anything that shouldn't be in there. So a lot of times what you'll see with these is that you'll actually have waste at the end. Instead of, you know, everything getting incorporated into the wool. With these ones, you have very, very clean, perfect wool ready to spin into worsted this is how you create worsted yarn worsted yarn all the fibers are parallel to each other 
instead of being crossed back and forth and just like this big old ball of fluff, all the fibers are parallel to each other and you create worsted, which is very strong, sleek, um, fine, amazing yarn uh, for, for apparel. It's fantastic for apparel. Anything you want to be hard wearing, you want to use worsted. That's not just, by the way, that's not just a gauge. Gauge, you can have a worsted gauge, which is the width of the yarn, but the actual process of spinning it, if it's worsted, is very different than what you're talking about when you're talking about the size and the gauge of the yarn. So, and these I try to keep protected. They ha they they need to have cardboard on them, on the edges, but I lost one of them. So this is what I made with the combs and it doesn't have any slubbing. It doesn't have any hair. It doesn't have anything left over that isn't absolutely perfect. Now I do have a carding um, table. What are they called? I do have a drum carter and it's fantastic. And I don't remember which one I have. It might, I'd have to I'd have to go look, but it was very, very expensive. And it's a fantastic tool for blending. I really like it for alpaca, but before you put it on a, on a blending, um, on a drum carter, you really want it to already be clean. You need it to be clean, not just of lanolin, meaning you washed it, it obviously needs washed. But when you're actually processing it on the drum carter, you want it to not have a lot of vegetable matter in it. It's why I really prefer to purchase from Natalie over at Namaste Farms is because she coats her animals. And so as soon as you wash it, I'm trying to think if I have any, any locks left in here that I could show you. I don't think I do. I think I have it in my other bag. Um, before the, your end product is only going to be as good as your beginning product, which is your wool. And so for fine wool, which is things like Merino, you really, really want to start with good fiber because it's a pain in the butt to try and get hay and manure and sticky things out of your wool. It wastes your time. So um, I will put her link in the description below as well. I think I forgot to put hers on there. Oh, hey, everybody's here. Um, so yes, I am live. I just didn't see that you were all there. Um, so go over to my Facebook page, which is Dirt Patch Heaven. So it's uh, facebook.com forward slash Dirt Patch Heaven. That will be at 11 o'clock this morning. And then what I'm going to try and do is have Catherine come on and do my live show with me on Sunday because I really want you to get to know her. She's amazing. She writes a homesteading news article in New Mexico. And she is a fellow redhead uh, sister. So I am excited to have you guys meet her. If you're interested in learning about the wool craft and how to do it as cheap as possible, um, I do have her say, don't scrimp on your fiber. That's not the place to scrimp um, because you can do a lot with really fantastic fiber. Even if you don't have fantastic tools, you can spin from the lock. Um, you can open things up with your hands. But if your wool is terrible, there's there's a limit to what you can really do with it. So I'll put Natalie's link in the description below too um, for her website. I do have four of her scrap boxes that have been dyed for me to show you that too. And um, so, hey, Danny, you made it. Carmelina Balkin made it. Vincent Shemks, Shemk made it. Um, Kenneth Bingham made it. So you guys are all up early, early. Maniac Grammys. Homestead made it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pop off. The reason I did this really quick was just so that you guys would know that um, that's what I'll be doing on Facebook Live. I'm trying to move more towards these other platforms a little bit, learn how to use them a little bit because they all have good um, <clears throat> alternate skills that I need to learn. So... Um, Alrighty, so I'm going to go pop off and I will put those links in the description and hopefully we'll see you there. Make sure to go. And if you haven't checked out my Pinterest boards, you're missing out. Um, the one specifically that I love the most is how to homestead on a budget. Is that what it was? How to homestead on a budget? I think that's what it was. How to homestead on a budget. And I put all my dream projects on there. So Dirt Patch Heaven on Pinterest um, and the board how to homestead on a budget. So hopefully that was helpful and 
we will talk to you later.